In this video, we'll be deploying Zabbix server, Zabbix frontend, and Zabbix agent on MySQL database backend together with Apache frontend. Let's begin with some preparation. Here I have CentOS 9 host. Let's take a look at the current date and time. This date and time is actually used by some of the Zabbix server features, and Zabbix server will be running on this machine. So we want to ensure that it uses the proper time zone and also has the correct time. So I've now confirmed that the date and time is correct. It fits my time zone. And as our next prerequisite, before we get to installing the Zabbix server and Zabbix frontend, let's install our database backend. For our example, I will be using a MySQL 8 community server. You can take a look at our requirements page to see the MySQL versions that fit your environment and that are supported by Zabbix, but in this case, we'll be using MySQL 8. Let's begin by installing the MySQL 8 community release repository. I will be copying the commands over here in the command line. So the repository has been installed. Let's now proceed with installing the MySQL community server. The installation might take a while. So we execute the DNF install command and let's wait for this to finish. Then we will enable and start our MySQL server and confirm that it's running. Let's now enable our MySQL server and start it up with systemctl. And once it has started up, let's take a look at the status of MySQL D and we can see that it's active running over here. So everything seems to be okay. Next up, for MySQL 8, we need to grep our temporary root password from var log MySQL D log over here. So we can see our temporary password. Let's copy it. And let's run the pre-install configuration. MySQL secure installation. Let's enter our password that we just copied over. And now I will type in a new password. Once we have entered our password, and you can see over here, it took me a couple of tries to enter it without any typos. We then will be asked, do we want to change it? Once again, we need to say no. And then we will be asked a couple of questions to which we'll answer with yes. So do we want to remove anonymous users? Yes. Do we want to disallow remote root logins? Yes. Do we want to remove the test database? Yes. And finally, do we wish to reload the privilege table? Yes. All right, and that's it for the MySQL setup. Next up, we can move on to the Zabbix part. We will first install Zabbix 7.2 repository for CentOS 9. So let me copy the command over. So we're using RPM and we are installing 7.2 repository for CentOS 9. Once the repository has been installed, we can now use DNF install command and install the required Zabbix components. So we will begin with installing Zabbix server for MySQL, Zabbix web backend for MySQL, the Apache server on which the web backend will be running, and Zabbix SQL scripts, the package that contains the initial schema and initial data set required for a fresh Zabbix installation. Let's install all of this. Okay, we have installed the required components. Now let's move on to our next step, which is creating an empty database where Zabbix data and schema will be created. So let's log into MySQL with the root user account. Next up, let's create an empty Zabbix database. Create database named Zabbix with character set UTF-8 MB4 and UTF-8 MB4 bin collation. This is a requirement for Zabbix database. 
so ensure that you're using the correct character set and correct collation. Next up, let's create a user. Here we are creating a localhost Zabbix user. So since our Zabbix server and Zabbix frontend is located on the same machine as our database, and this can be different in your case, in your scenario, we'll be creating a localhost Zabbix user and we'll set a password to it. In my case, it's Zabbix72 exclamation point. So once we have created the user, we need to grant privileges. I will grant all privileges on all of Zabbix database tables to the newly created Zabbix user. Finally, before we proceed with importing the initial Zabbix schema, we also need to permit MySQL binary logging to trust stored function creators not to create functions that will cause unsafe events. We will enable the log bin trust function creators option before we import the Zabbix database schema, and for security reasons, we will later on disable it. So this is what it looks like. Set global log bin trust function creators equals one. So this will essentially allow Zabbix to create database triggers. This is the term triggers, I know we use it in Zabbix, but this has to do with MySQL, with database itself. So during the initial schema import, triggers will be created on the database in MySQL. And after that is done, we can disable log bin trust function creators, once again, for security reasons. For now, let's quit from the MySQL command line. And let's proceed with importing the initial schema and data. I will copy over the command to do this. So we are using Zcat to extract this here server.sql.jz archive and import it into MySQL with UTF-8 MB4 characters set using the Zabbix user and importing into the Zabbix database that we created a moment ago. Let's provide the password for our Zabbix user. And now let's just wait. Nothing appears on the screen. There's no progress bar. But this will, the screen will remain this way, the terminal will, rem will remain this way, while the data is being imported into the Zabbix database. Depending on your system resources, it may take a minute or two, so let's just wait until everything is done. Do not interrupt this at any point in time, or the import of data and schema will fail. Okay, so everything seems to have finished. Now let's continue. Let's disable log bin trust function creators for security reasons. So let me re-log into MySQL as root. And now let's set global log bin trust function creators to zero. So since triggers have been created on the database, we can now disable this. It is not needed during Zabbix server or Zabbix frontend runtime and quit the command line. All right. Let's clear up our screen over here. And next up, let's continue with opening the Zabbix server configuration file, etc zabbix zabbix server.conf. And let's move to DB section. So here we need to specify the database host, the database name. The default host is localhost. We also have the database name pre-configured as Zabbix, which fits our environment. But once again, feel free to adjust this as per your individual environment. DB schema is used for Postgres. We will skip this. DB user is also pre-configured as Zabbix, which is the user that we created. Once again, if you create a different user, feel free to change this. And DB password needs to be plugged in directly in the config file. Let's save these changes. And I will do one more thing. I will add a firewall rule. I will permit connections to my Zabbix server. So let's use firewall CMD. And over here, add a new rule, permission for Zabbix server over here, for Zabbix server service. Let's reload the firewall. And let's enable and start all of the required components. So let's enable Zabbix server, the web backend together with PHP FTM, and start them up. 
with the now parameter. Now let's confirm that everything is working. Let's do a tail of var log Zabbix Zabbix server log. And over here, everything seems to be in order. Some error messages are related to the fact that not all of Zabbix processes are started by default. So they are expected over here, but there are no crashes or anything like that. Also, we do not have Zabbix agent running, so we could have some issues with that. We'll deploy it a bit later. Next up, we need to access our Zabbix environment via the web GUI. But once again, to do that, I need to add another firewall rule. I need to permit incoming HTTP connections. So let's add a firewall rule for that over here. Add service HTTP. And once again, let's reload our firewall. Next up, let's move to our front end and let's go through the initial front end configuration. Over here, you can see the initial front end configuration. Let's use the default language, which is English. Here, you can go through a list of the front end prerequisites PHP versions, various PHP attributes and parameters. Do they fit the minimum Zabbix requirements? Over here, everything is okay. Then we need to configure how our front end connects to the database. So it's not just Zabbix server that connects to the database, which we configured in the Zabbix server configuration file. It's also our front end. And here we can set the database host, port, database name, database user, and database password. Over here, we're using all of the defaults. The front end is located on the same machine as the database and the server. So let me type in the password. And we can proceed to the next step. Let's select the time zone. I'm using GMT plus three. And optionally, we can give our Zabbix instance a name over here. This name will appear in the Zabbix front end. It's completely optional. I will just call this my Zabbix instance. Let's click next. Check that the summary fits our requirements. And finally, we can click finish and log into Zabbix with the username admin and the default password, which is Zabbix, all lowercase letters. So we have logged in. We can see the initial dashboard version 7.2.6 of the front end over here, the same version for the server also. And if we go to data collection hosts, we can see our first Zabbix server host with a red agent icon. So we still have to install the agent to monitor our own Zabbix server machine. So let's do just that. Let's move back to our command line and install Zabbix agent. So installing Zabbix agent and configuring it should be quite simple. Let's do DNF install Zabbix agent and we'll be using Zabbix agent to the next generation agent. Now let's open Zabbix agent configuration, etc Zabbix, Zabbix agent2 in our case, .conf. If you're using the regular agent, then it will be Zabbix agent.conf. And let's look at server parameters. This is what we are interested in. So in this case, the agent is running on the same machine as the Zabbix server, right? We are doing essentially self-monitoring via this agent. So this is the address, the list of permitted addresses that can pull this agent. They can request metrics from this agent. So our Zabbix server located on the same local host machine can indeed request metrics from this agent. And if we are using active checks, so Zabbix agent supports active and passive checks, polling versus trapping, we need to look at the server active parameter over here. And also the agent will in that case establish connections to Zabbix servers or proxies in these here addresses. In this case, once again, Zabbix server, yes, is on the same machine as the agent, so everything is correct. Okay, we've confirmed our configuration. Let's quit the configuration file. Let's create a firewall rule for our Zabbix agent. Over here, add service Zabbix agent. Now let's reload the firewall. Once again, if you're running the agent on the same machine as the server, maybe these here firewall rules don't make too much sense. But if this were a remote agent, 
So Zabbix server would connect to it over the network. So in that case, permitting connections to Zabbix agent would make sense via the firewall. Now, finally, let's enable our Zabbix agent 2 and let's start it. And we can take a look at the Zabbix agent log. And we can see that everything seems to be in order. And if we switch back to the front end, we should see our ZBX icon next to our Zabbix server turn green in a little bit. Let's do just that. Okay, we can see that the ZBX icon has indeed turned green. This means that Zabbix server can communicate with the agent running on uh, the local host environment. So on the same machine, we can also see it's polling the agent on this here address on port 10050. So local host 10050. And it's collecting OS level metrics about itself. So self-monitoring. And at this point, you can start working with Zabbix. You can start creating your hosts, applying templates, creating items, triggers, and doing various other things. So we've managed to deploy Zabbix server, Zabbix frontend with MySQL and Apache, and also deploy Zabbix Agent 2. If you're interested in more, please feel free to follow our other videos and learn more about how Zabbix items, host triggers work, how you can get the most of Zabbix low-level discovery, and much more. If you're interested in some other configuration options or other deployment types, feel free to leave a comment under this video, and we will try and get the related content out to you as soon as possible. Thank you, guys.